Hello, uh, hello everybody uh, and welcome and thank you for joining us and uh, uh, thanks to everyone. I know there's people out there in Nottinghamshire, I know there's people out there in the rest of the UK and uh, I'm told there's somebody from Belgium as well. So you never know, we've got people from all over the world. So thanks for uh, inviting me into your home uh, and uh, my special guest today. Um, so this is the new Poetry Society and uh, it's an hour long uh, and it's uh, chat and poetry and um, we get to answer some of your questions. So we've got a chat facility and a question uh, facility. So you can use either. Uh, and uh, later on, about halfway through, I'll uh, have a look at them and um, ask uh, Manjit, my guest, uh, to, uh, to answer some questions. And I might answer some questions as well. So this is brought to you by uh, Inspire, which is the Nottinghamshire Libraries and the Nottingham County Council, and the Nottingham Poetry Festival, and uh, Metronome, uh, um, and uh, Confetti, which is a, a big organization in Nottingham that does lots of great stuff. So uh, thank you. Now, without further ado, uh, this is the second one uh, in my series of 10. And uh, the first week we had Bridie Squires and that was brilliant. Um, that will be available uh, online very shortly and also be available to see on uh, Knots TV uh, very shortly. But please uh, welcome today uh, one of my favorite uh, poets and a uh, great organizer uh, within the uh, Nottinghamshire region. So uh, please welcome Manjit Sahuta. Hiya Manjit, how are you doing? Oh, I'm fine, Henry. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Now, hey, uh, uh, you and I met in a library, didn't we? We did, yeah. We were just, uh, yeah, it was a, it was an interesting experience just uh, being part of a, a library session. And uh, I think it was Sherwood Library. I'm not sure. And I think they're doing a revamp for Sherwood Library. But yeah. Yes. Uh, and and, uh, and you, uh, this is when I was doing a, a tour of the libraries. Uh, and uh, I was inviting people to come and uh, and do a, a poem. And I, I think you came to Sherwood, and I think you came to the Central Library as well. Yeah, yeah, I uh, think uh, that was I, the same year. I, I, no, I did appreciate that. Somebody who actually comes back, that's always a good sign. Yeah, you didn't scare me off. I thought, hold oh, on, I may as well start. I, had, I actually started stalking you as well for a while. I think we bumped into each other in St. Anne's, you know, all yeah. the top, top, top uh, venues. Yeah. Oh well. Well. Yeah. I love saying I'm from St Anne's, so yeah. uh, um, nice to go. Although my dad used to say it was uh, Schnenton because he was trying to be posh. Not yeah. too posh that he wanted to be Woolerton, but Schnenton was just about posh enough for him. Uh, but uh, I'm very proud of being from St Anne's. Seymour Street. It was. It knocked it down. Now. Yeah. Uh, so, but you're originally you're from Shrewsbury. Yes, that's right. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, for years, um, uh, we we uh, well, I lived in Telford in Shropshire, and uh, yeah. until I was forty-two, and then my dad says, "Why do you on constantly go on about Telford? There was no maternity hospital in nineteen sixty-three in Telford. It was in Shrewsbury. So, in fact, you were born in Shrewsbury, which, in football terms, Telford and Shrewsbury Town didn't really get on, and uh, so I had to uh, really uh, reevaluate my loyalties to Shrewsbury. Beautiful place, Shrewsbury. Shropshire's yeah. a great county." Uh, but yeah, I uh, lived in Telford, but born, born in Shrewsbury. So I'm from the West Midlands. So you're from the, and, and uh, what was it, what was it like growing up in the West Midlands? So uh, I don't want to date you too much, but we, we're yeah. going back to the, the eighties. Well, in the West, yeah, we're, we're going back from to, from 1963, right up to the seventies, early eighties. Interesting. We're, a lot of my cousins um, and family live in the black country. So the West Midlands, Wolverhampton, Birmingham, Willanall. And a lot of my uncles and um, worked in the foundries. Uh, so a lot of the experience was early on a combination of the smell of coke and foundry smell on people's clothes uh, and racism on a regular basis. <laughs> so that what was a, very, what a great combination. Great combination. So that's, that, that really has helped my poetry. Uh, you know, yeah. ever, if I've ever stuck for a poem, I just sort of sit back and uh, just, uh, you know, think about all the... Uh, little scrapes we got into as uh, young kids in yeah. Birmingham, Handsworth, Birmingham, running away from the National Front. Now, now there will be people that uh, haven't seen you yet, so this will be an inter introduction to you. I'd love you to do me a poem up front. OK, yeah, uh, this poem's, um, uh, I wrote this uh, last week, uh, a couple of weeks ago. It's, um, it's basically a poem about um, the importance to demonstrate. There is a policing bill going through uh, to stop you from making a noise when you demonstrate or being a nuisance. And that's quite dangerous and we need to have the right to, to demonstrate. So uh, this is a poem dedicated to that. Um, so uh, keep on demonstrating. It's called, 
If my words were drops of blood, if my words were drops of blood, then this is not a poem. I'm bleeding, but I'll not lose consciousness before I stop. You see, the pain is real. I can't sit back and watch the world go by on TV. If Ant and Deck are there to entertain, I'd rather be detained. <laughs> they say poetry is the mind language for light bulb moments. Moments when we watched your napalm orange flame lick our enemies in the jungle, while water cannon fingers pushed me around, followed by the sound of leather wrapped willow on skull. Against black, white men and women organized or marginalized, to them it matters none. And you still tear gas our children for crying out loud. So you see, when the news is brought to you by the right, are you surprised they leave out the left? We will not be fooled by the press, but strike while the iron's hot. We live in a world where the center is extreme and the fringes can be cool. Cool to stand for something, cool to fight for something, cool to march for something. So we will not stand down, hold our tongue, know our place, listen to your civil lies. We march with pictures of our dead, so they do not bury the living. Armed with love, a shield of solidarity, nerves of steel and a heart of gold, we move on. Because we will not disappear, moderate, evaporate, assimilate, dissipate, but congregate, agitate, irritate and regenerate. We will bring our history and bite the head off your future. We will disarm the rulers and turn out the lights and leave them in the dark. We will take our ball back and stop playing for the elite. We will learn to swim against the tide. For we are the lifeguards that keep communities alive. We will no longer cradle billionaire babies with hands of coal, steel, sugar and gold. We will not fall asleep listening to your narcotic national anthem. We will not let the grass grow under our feet while you burn the sky. We will not go quietly and accept the right to remain silent. We will no longer bury our children, but bite the hand that feeds hate. We will be annoying, a nuisance. We will be disrespectful if we are disbelieved. We are not one snowflake. We are a storm. And we are not tired of fighting, but tired of being led by spineless knights at the helm. And we will not shout alone, but roar with the many. So if my words are drops of blood, I'm still bleeding. And only vampires would watch and do nothing. Ooh, Thank you. That was great. There's so many great lines in that. That's that, that that that's that's an epic. That must have took you a while to write. It's it's one of my longest poems, which you know usually I've I, I stick to A4 because I don't like turning the page. Yeah. Uh, but that's two pages, so it's a uh, it's quite uh, yeah, no, interesting. I, I, I love that, and I I love the, the your passion for it, and uh, uh, the um, so you don't bury the living. That that's all oh, that that got me. I think it's that thing when people go, you know, what is happening, you know, to be silent, you know, now, to not have a voice. Um, there's a there's an agenda to bury a whole yeah. section of us. And that's why it's important to use poetry, any platform to say we're here. We're not going to disappear. Well, I, I think you're right. And I, because I think half the battle for any prejudice is it's ignorance. And what we need is is information. Uh, and at its root, uh, poetry is. Um, like it's communication, like like anything else. I love the the other line, "Burn the burn the sky." That was a, a lovely line. They're, they're, they're very powerful. People often say, you know, um, is it poetry if it doesn't rhyme? And to me, it's about the use of language. And your use of language, your concentration of language, your use of imagery, really, you know. It's poetic. It's 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 not uh, prose. It's not uh, uh, you know just uh, um, a political statement. There's um, you know there, there's there's a heart to it, uh, and um, I, I love that. That's gorgeous. So uh, t tell me, how do you how would you self-identify as they say these days? Um, well, as a, in, uh, well, as, as a male, a he, uh, an Asian, British, English um man so yeah. it's like uh um i think that's quite important how because a lot of the time you're identified by other people and it yeah. takes a while 
to um, a history of uh, you know name calling. So you think your name is something else when you're a child, and you yeah. realise there's a bunch of racist names, and then you find yourself. And you start. I think I'm still struggling to pinpoint exactly who I am, which is actually not too bad. You know, I, do, do you know, it's funny that because uh, um, I was listening to what you said and I was listening to all the categories that uh, that you were, you know, choosing from. Uh, um, and of course, I'm very conscious of being old these days. Right. So uh, um, uh, when I'm self-identifying, old's one of the things that, uh, that I, I mean, obviously, young, young at heart, yeah. you know, uh, yeah. let's hope. Uh, um, so it, it, there's such an array of, of, of ways of defining ourselves. Uh, but uh, obviously, uh, you know, in England, uh, um, uh, at this moment in time, um, you know, uh, race, strangely enough, strange, I, I, I find it bizarre. I, I was brought up, my, my dad was, um, worked at Rally for 40 years. Uh, I don't think he had a racist bone in his body. Uh, um, but nobody taught him. It, it just yeah. didn't, you know, his, his heroes were, um, you know, sort of, uh, uh, well, uh, Gandhi uh, definitely won. Um, uh, uh, Muhammad Ali uh, used to, you know, I'd stop up late at night watching Muhammad Ali. And, uh, uh, you know, sort of uh, soul music and stuff like that. No thought that, that there was a difference. Uh, I mean, there is a difference and we, we know that there is a difference, but no thought that there was a, essentially a difference. Yeah. And, and I, uh, I think that, yeah, I think that's right, because then you realise it's a conscious effort by organisations and governments, yeah. because it's actually not natural. And my, for the same, Muhammad Ali, an incredible poet. Some of the poets, poetic lines come from Muhammad Ali. People tuned in and, you know, because he was just beyond, um, and that people did, didn't did see the colour, they actually saw an incredible... Well, you being. saw his personality and uh, yeah. incredible personality and incredible uh, person, as in, you know, I say most of uh, my heroes when I think in sort of uh, world terms, um, it's very few um, that uh, actually reflect my background. Um, now, uh, working class is something I would identify with as well. Um, and uh, it's quite strange because I've earned a bit of money in television. So uh, am I still working class? Mm, well, I still have beans on toast watching yeah. the footy because uh, I can't change. But so th sometimes the things like uh, where you are, uh, you know, other people start putting you into uh, different uh, pigeonholes, but it's not I, where you put I, yourself. Yeah, I, th I always say I'm uh, my lifestyle middle class, but my bills and my debts are working class. <laughs> Can't can't escape from the gas, and my, you know the media is owned by Richard Branson, so it's uh, certainly trapped, you know. And yeah. uh, I, now I'm going I'm going to read you a poem. Uh, this is um, so I, I live in uh, Brighton now, uh, um, and uh, just uh, um, to one side of me is um, uh, Ovindeen. And I was, I was sat on the beach at Ovindeen, so it's all pebbly uh, beach. And yeah. behind me is is the White Cliffs, and there's such a iconic. Uh, um, image, uh, the, the White Cliffs, and it, it made me think about the, uh, the moment. So this is called Low Tide. The floor of the English Channel is exposed. My loved ones paddle barefoot in puddles. All around toddlers and ghouls find a new balance. Further out to sea, teenagers dear themselves another step. Sailing ships and even speedboats Seem in no worry today. There's a slight haze, like spilt flour on a blue tabletop. A man in shorts loses himself with a net and bucket. Behind me, white cliffs stretch out, open arms. Underfoot, the chalk continues south, crowned by seaweed. The myth of our island nation is revealed. We are, as ever, joined to each continent by land. The water just sits on the top, reflecting sunlight all the way to the horizon. So I, 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 I try to look at the politics of things in a, a very personal way, and I try to look at it in, in a universal way, because um, I'm that old that I've, I've seen, you know, liars from all parties come and go. Yeah, I think I think it's really important. When I started my journey in poetry, I had to convince the activists I knew for the last 30 years that poetry was serious. And then I had to convince the poets that politics was important. So it's nice to sit 
sometimes as an activist in a poetry event and sometimes as a poet in an, an activist event. Um, but certainly, um, who wants to listen to another political speech when you can make <laughs> when when you can make a political point through poetry? And if you look yeah. at Amanda Gorman at the steps of Capitol Hill, oh yeah, who remembers yeah. Biden's speech? Nobody. Who remembers that poem? Um, yeah. And it went viral. And I think it's there's a place for art, and always has been. Yeah. Poetry and art has always been in the front line of of testing the water of what change has been the canary in the in the mine to tell people that something's up. Um, and that's, we could, must remember how important that is. And I would go to activist means I, I do poetry and rallies um, and I sellotape my poems down because it's really windy outside sometimes, but <laughs> they say, now we're going to have a poet. And I said, no, the, the event is the poetry. The, the event is the poet. And sometimes they go, oh yeah, you're not, you know, you're not at the end. You're not yeah, yeah, it's not, not just talked in. Not just, not talk just in. Sho yeah. shove you on. No, we're going to have a poet if you want to go to the bar. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> have a, go and get yourself a drink. This guy's going to do a poem. Yeah. That so um, how, did, how did you first get into poetry? Well, well, you know, uh, was that something that you would have at home? Uh, was it uh, school? Uh, how did you first, uh, you know, think of yourself as a poet? I think very basically I was a daydreamer. Really helps if you don't want to do much at school. Uh, looking through the windows, uh, trying to, you know, get into conversation with people about, um, uh, ray, you know, sort of avoid uh, confrontation. I used to make jokes. So a lot of the time they'd be thinking about, quick on my feet to think about ways of getting out of sticky moments so funny lines would come up so for I suppose I've been writing poetry uh, and performing it since 2016 but I think it took about 30 years to mature so it, it, it there, there's all those memories and experiences but I've always been attracted to the idea of actually communicating with people and a lot of my political journey has been getting up and making speeches but actually also they had a little bit of funny end because I thought Five people have made the same point. How am I going to make the, the same point to reinforce it, but actually do it differently? So yeah. I used a bit of uh, poetry and poetic lines to think, you know, that that might stay with people a bit more. Um, so and then so and then literally, you know, it, things start to rhyme. And rhyme's important for me because it helps me to remember the next line more 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 than anything else. Oh and yeah, then, yeah. No, I, I've you know I, I've talked to to reading because my memory is is so bad. As, as my sister says, I can, I can remember all the words to uh, Bohemian Rhapsody, but I can't remember yeah. why I come in the kitchen. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, you know, I'm a bit at that stage in the minute. So uh, t tell me, can you remember the first time you actually got up and performed in public? Uh, uh, yes, I, th I think the first time in public, we, I went to a brilliant um, uh, spoken word event you know, by Liam Moden um, in... Uh, called crossword in, in a in a cave in nottingham and i walked in and there was you know 30 30 people there um, and the poets and they were brilliant they were just so supportive um but my first performance was on a bus um on a way to a demonstration i got up went to the front of the bus and i said are you going to make a speech we're going to an anti-racist march and the organizer said i don't think uh, but i'll tell people where the toilets are and we're coming back at four and i said <laughs> well can i do a poem and she said, now, look, I don't think we're ready for poetry. We may. We, and I thought, we're going to march for three hours against the far right. But poet, that's going too far. So I, I thought I was, it was a challenge. So I did my poem, Empire Calling. And, and you know, people went, oh, 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 that's poetry, is it? I didn't, I wasn't, I was expecting something a bit more scary. Um, yes. So, but the first thing you get when, just to have a response from people from when you've performed and written a poem and you perform it, that's uh, that's the reason that keeps you going to keep performing is to make that connection. Yeah, so no, that, that was the first one. Yeah, no, connect, connection is is exactly what it is. So uh, have you got another poem for us? Yeah, this one's, um, um, I, I, I spent some time in Wales uh, the last, uh, when we had a chance of holiday, I went to South Wales and uh, in South Wales, there's a, a, a nasty um, a group of people called the uh, Britain First. They wear these uh, lion claw lapels badges and they're stopping migrant refugees in dinghies and shouting at them and swearing them telling them to go back and I find it uh, horrendous the brilliant thing is loads of people turn up on the beaches and welcome refugees um so um I, I wrote this poem really to I want to be the people the people that one of those people on the beaches with a heart to welcome them um yeah. so in a way there's a bit of a link to the the coast um here as well so this poem's called um heart in the heartless world 
I'll meet you where the lion's claw dips into a silent sea, where we still carry broken hearts like daisy chains, where bomber planes smear the sky like makeup trails, as we float in a black sea with cornflake hunger pains and watch mothers lose their guardians to the breeze. So under a blood red teardrop moon we drift, trying to make out the landscape, hope it is not a dream. I will be the heart in the heartless world. I will be your harbour. So let's sit together in a stolen land and watch all empires fall, because we all arrived here by a boat, blown in from the north, east, south and the west. I will be the heart in the heartless world. I will be your harbour. But we do need to deport the criminals and the work shy. So round up the government, the Tories and the billionaires, because we'll trade racists for migrants and their families. I will be the heart in the heartless world. I will be your harbour. So no more bleeding stars, no more nights in fear. Take my hand and step ashore because refugees are welcome here. Oh, I like it. I like it. Do you know, um, I, I remember listening to Radio 4 once and uh, it, was, it said that um, we're losing the battle on propaganda that uh, that people uh, young uh, um, Asian people and you know uh, uh, Middle Eastern uh, um, heritage uh, people um, were listening to extremists and I, and I said we're not we're not even in the battle mm. We, mm. you know Jeremy you know I mean? when was the last time you heard anybody from the government or anybody from all the tiers of government say something like you've just said yeah, you know I mean, and made somebody welcome. And I, I think I think you're absolutely right, of course. Um, there, there's I've, I've written a little poem, which I'll do you. There, there, there's two. It strikes me that there's only there's only two ways we could have got here, right? Uh, if you believe the Bible, yeah. then we came from the Garden of Eden, obviously, uh, um, which was between the Tigris and the Euphrates in in the Middle East. But that that would be one way. Yeah. And the other way is if you believe Darwin and the evolutionists, we came from Africa, then we came up through um, uh, the Middle East, uh, uh, over uh, Eastern Europe, and, and we got it. There's no other way we got it, right? The, 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 the life didn't start, humans didn't start in Britain, in England. No. No. You know what I mean? Uh, the, the cavemen came, but they came that way. So I wrote, wrote a little poem called uh, Every Nation is an Immigrant Nation. So this is it. If you believe in Adam and Eve, then everyone is a refugee. If you believe in evolution, you reach the same conclusion. So I, I like I like sometimes to 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 make set it down nice and simple. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I, I I remember seeing one of my earliest inf influences was a, a, a Danish poet called Piet Ein. Have you, have you come across him? No. And uh, all these poems, he wrote about 2,000 poems, and they're right. all very short. Um, and, th and they last forever because they're very short and uh, they're just succinct. So he wrote things like, uh, love is like a pineapple, sweet and indefinable. Uh, he who lets the small things bind him leaves the great undone behind him. And, and I, I love that, that he constructed these small, and he, he was um, an engineer by trade and he, he, he an inventor. Um, but it, but he, he wrote these little uh, sort of um, uh, epigrams, uh, you know, and uh, the, the first one he wrote was during uh, World War Two, and he wrote it, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, to sort of uh, about the Nazis and the Nazis mm -hmm. didn't understand it. Uh, yeah. um, and uh, so I, I love that the, they actually mean more than the four lines that, that he writes. Um, so anybody listen to this, do check him out. Pier Tyne is uh, very underrated. And uh, as I say, uh, I remember stuff. For, I mean, those two, I've, uh, I've got, I read those when I was 17. So that's what, you know, uh, a long time ago. So, uh, you, so you've got, you've got an organisation. Now, did you invent the organisation? Uh, I know you're a big organiser uh, called uh, um, Poets Against Racism. Yeah, well, Poets Against Racism, it was um, formed in a workshop in um, the um, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a in a love music hate racism workshop where a lot of DJs and singers and were chatting away. And then the four people in the room said, well, I'm a poet um, and I'm against racism. And um, well, you know, we maybe we should form uh, a group 
Uh, and I, I thought, well, that's brilliant because in the 70s, we had rock against racism and that brought the clash and all the big bands together and to take on the, the racism that was coming out of the the, um, the rock industry then and uh, Eric Clapton's famous uh, famous uh, sort of uh, position uh, yeah. in support of some of the comments of the National Front. So rock against racism, uh, it, it, I nicked it from there and put poets against racism. In a way, it's got an element of Monty Python about it because it's like, what, poets against racism? Well, what, <laughs> what are you going to do? Stick Nazis in the poems and they're locked forever? And in a way, that's quite, it's quite as far as subversive way of going, well, and there was a rise of spoken word and poetry around. And I thought, yeah. this is brilliant. And as individual poets, it, I, there's a brilliant diverse range, but to bring people together in a room, and to raise money for refugees or care for Calais or and but yeah. that sounds sounds so logical. So 2016, Poets Against Rain was starting to, to form. Um, and um, myself and Robert Punton from Birmingham and um, Ian Henry from Birmingham is a brilliant poet, uh, part of Hope Radio. The three of us really have kept it, the core of it uh, going. But yeah, we started it. Well, we started Poets Against Rain. I, I think it's a great idea. I, I, I don't know any racist poets, to be honest with you. I, I think uh, it comes with... Uh, um, sensitivity that, that uh, once you uh, you have a little bit of education and you've got sensitivity, I don't think I think it's quite impossible to become yeah. uh, um, a, a racist. I, th I think uh, you know it, it, it's it's a it's a, a lack of understanding that, that is our problem. And I think poetry is is a great way of of sorting that. Yeah. Um, it, it always it makes me laugh when um, you see these. Uh, uh, you know, sort of uh, in English uh, sort of um, thugs. I, I, I can't think of a better word to call them. Uh, and they've got they're draped in uh, the, uh, the cross of Saint George. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, I, and I always think, I bet you don't know what where all this comes from, the cross of Saint George, because I'm I'm, I'm sure you know. Well, I mean, Saint yeah. George was. Born in what is now Turkey, was Turkey. Uh, originally Syria uh, when yeah. he was born. Uh, he was a Roman citizen. Uh, he worked in um, uh, Israel, uh, where he uh, was, uh, you know, murdered because he he, he wouldn't stop being a Christian. Um, and of course, if he came to Britain today, they wouldn't let him in. No, absolutely. Well, yeah, so you'll be, uh, yeah, they'd, they'd be on the shores stopping him. Stopping yeah, him, uh, and, and and yet they're wearing this this uh, now. Um, and, and I, I looked up where, where uh, wh why we chose that particular saint. So um, this was during the Crusades. Uh, there was one particular battle where um, they were outnumbered and uh, um, they say that the ghost of uh, St. George rode along with them. So uh, that's why, you know, because of that battle yeah. uh, um, and they, they won it, um, they had this affinity for, uh, for St. George. So it, it comes from, from the Crusades. But... The white with the red isn't English. That's French. The French wore yeah. that. The, the English wore what we now think of as being the, um, uh, the Scottish flag, uh, yeah. uh, blue with the white. Um, and it's because Richard the Lionheart, uh, or Richard the Idiot, as I call him, uh, um, was, uh, w was French, basically. He spent six months of his reign in England. Uh, um, the re wore that. So all these people Incredible. saying, oh, how great England is, they're wearing a French emblem. Yeah, yeah. And it, it shows that also how temporary and made up countries are. I'm always amazed when I look at a map and think how straight lines appear and how Iraq and Iran are yes. names of countries when they're actually oil companies put together with the, with the lines drawn. And it's yeah. just interesting that, you know, the, the, and in a way, that's a bit of hope, you know, that their things are temporary, however bad they may seem, you can yeah. change it, you can question where a country comes from, or what sort of country, or what sort of world you want to be, maybe without countries no, and borders. I, I, I certainly think you should take pride in your culture. I, I think that's a good thing. And uh, I, I, Lem Sisse always says a, a great line, which uh, um, I think sums it up, is uh, a salad and not a soup. Right. that we want distinct flavours. And, yeah. and I think that that's a great thing. And I think there's a lot to be said uh, for the community that we, uh, we have in England. Um, but uh, I say there, there's, there's this arcing back to some moment in time that was great, that, that wasn't great, and, and was never this, you know, uh, um, sort of uh, uh, Arthur legend uh, uh, sort of time. Um, 
I, I, so I, I'm doing a research. I've got a radio show coming up uh, about um, uh, history, and I was doing some research onto it. And um, do you know why Great Britain's called Great Britain? No. Well, well yeah. It's the it's the Romans that called it Great Britain. So basically, what they did is they came over to Britain and they saw we got a big island, which is uh, uh, Britain, and then we've got like the Isle of Man and the Isle of Wight, and then we've got Ireland. And so when they wanted to refer to the big island, they said it's Great, great Britain. So it's not great because it's great. It's yeah, great because it's bigger, bigger than Ireland. That, yeah, that, that's all. That's all it is. And yet, people take this, don't they? They take the Great Britain and go, "Oh, we're, we're, we're great in some way." That's just the Romans saying it's that one. It's a bit bigger than Ireland. Yeah, I think people associate Great Britain with the the the, uh, the history of conquering other nations. I mean, as yeah. well as being bigger than Ireland, and actually, you know, and used Ireland as a sort of a test ground for conquering the rest of the world. You know, to yeah. constantly seems to be. But it's interesting how people, how governments. Um, uh, give people the, a flag to wrap themselves around with so whatever pain you're going through if you're on you know low income or what you can wrap yourself in a flag then all the differences disappear that's the art of nationalism is to make people feel that there's, there's something in common despite the fact that the people who are telling you to wrap the flag are the ones causing you the pain and yeah, but, I think uh, see, uh, to, to me, you've got to remember where we've come from to remember who we are and yeah. and um, I mean the, the word Britain is actually from uh, a Turkish bloke. Uh, so it was originally called uh, uh, Albion, uh, which is after a Syrian princess, uh, mm. uh, so Albina, and then uh, called Britain after Brutus. Uh, it was a, um, a, a prince from uh, Turkey. And, and if, you, if you find out these things and know about these things, then the idea that we're somehow separate is bonkers. The, you know the the uh, you know just because you uh, were here before somebody was here we're still you know we're, we're still all immigrants really yeah. and that idea that you know it's important to actually look at colonial history and black history and our history of, because otherwise you can't understand what's to come the people who don't want you to look back at the empire and kind of colonial history and it, it are the people who are going well that's normal invading people and building empires and so you can't, don't start toppling statues and questioning where we got or how we got here. Uh, and if you find, uh, you'll find actually the poor in the east end of London, while the empire was at its height, were the ones who were suffering just as bad as the, uh, the Indian and the African populations around the world. You could see that it was a really clever trick to yeah. invent the empire and a flag to bind you into this idea that, that you know, we have to go and, and steal the spices and the trade from the rest of the world. So empire and nationalism are critical tools to keep that idea of superiority in place. And that's why a lot of my, the, the, the we're a product of the, you know, we are both sitting here now on Zoom, we're a product of the British Empire, you know, the British Empire brought my father here, here we are. So not to question it and unpick it and go backwards is ludicrous really, so yeah. More questions. And, well, I, I'm, you know, I'm Irish by descent, so my granddad came over uh, as a baby uh, um, back in, oh, I, I suppose, uh, near, just near the turn of the century. And, um, uh, and of course, back then, you know, there were signs up saying uh, no uh, blacks, no dogs, no Irish. No Irish. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, you know, so, uh, but I, I, I think of myself as being English. You know, I've, I've known nothing else. I, you know, just because I'm, I'm not black or, or or asian looking you know yeah. i'm you know I, nobody would question it yeah but you know uh, but strictly speaking I, i'm an immigrant as much as anybody else yeah and i think also it's interesting when people use white working class as a phrase if there's not black working class so you know the fact that you know i work you know was born in a working class area you know asian and black people have been part of the british history of working class through the 70s, 80s, worked in the factories. So there's a black and white working class. And they say it's interesting how white working class is seen as almost like a traditional population, which is actually quite a mistake because, you know, there's always been Polish, uh, uh, Yugoslavian refugees, uh, uh, migrants, Indian, Pakistani. My father worked in a wheel shop making tractors and yes. they put the wheels onto a tractor, eight bolts. And each bolt had a different person from a different country around the wheel and he used to we used to have yeah it didn't ever get second thought there were polish yugoslavian 
uh, Pakistani, African. So we're the, the working people and working class is made up of all you know, different uh, nationalities. So, but it sometimes it, so it's like the the whole history of England has been a history of history of uh, migrants coming here and and contributing to it. It, it certainly has. Now, have you got another poem for us? Yeah, I'm going to, I've, I've been doing some children's poems uh, and yep. uh, this, this is um, not a children's poem, but it, it's, it, it, I'd like to somehow to sometimes explain um, political situations um, by, by using poetry. And uh, this is a very early poem um, and it's called, um, and Bertie is an old uh, English name for fortress. So this is called uh, Bertie the Bee is worried about the collapse of neoliberalism. So, you know, I don't like to patronise <laughs> children. Yeah. So here we go. Bertie the bee buzzed around the garden, avoiding the children's screams. He's worried about the collapse of neoliberalism. Now we live in a world of extremes. The rise of the right and the move to the left has got him all in a flutter. He no longer recognises the political landscape, so he's buried his head in the butter. I can't work it out. My life was so bland, I was happy seated on the spot. But there's people in the streets. They think it's all over because capitalism is starting to rot. No turning back to the false days of stable and strong. The change is running too deep. All heads bowed in the face of the storm. Even the willows are starting to weep. The worms are marching. They think they're dragons, crushing all the flowers in their path. I'm calling the beetles, the butterflies, the wasps. But the swallows are still having a bath. The neighbours are building a wall over the pond, protect their borders and shrubs. It's not to keep things in, but to keep things out, like snails, migraine and ants and bugs. But we fought off the worms, the moles and the slugs and put their army to bed. Now there's hope in my heart. Let's make a new start and build a garden that's rosy and red. <laughs> nice one. <No. laughs> Trying to get that into schools. Yeah, that, well, yes. Yeah, did you know uh, it's no less uh, political than uh, uh, than the nursery rhymes? Uh, if yeah. you go back, and I, I know Umpty Dumpty is based on uh, uh, a canon in the uh, Civil War. Uh, it was it was called Umpty Dumpty, right. and uh, you know, obviously, a lot of them ring a ring of roses about the. Uh, um, yeah, the plague, uh, the plague yeah. and everything. So uh, you know, we've been uh, we've been doing uh, rhymes for kids for for years with uh, political undertones, shall we say? Yeah. So I was talking to you about um, uh, Richard the Lionheart uh, uh, or, or Dick the Dick, as I, as I uh, think of him. Um, so I don't know whether you know this, but uh, obviously they're doing up uh, Nottingham Castle at the moment, and uh, I was looking yeah. into uh, Nottingham Castle and and why it was so important in in the past. Um, and I've never been, a, I don't know about you, I've never been a fan of Robin Hood. Uh, um, I don't understand why we make such a fuss of him uh, in that, you know, he didn't even come from Nottingham. This is, you know, yeah. he, he may have worked in Nottingham occasionally, but this is this is where his nemesis was, wasn't it? The Sheriff of Nottingham. So we don't, you know, it, it's not really, uh, Nottingham's not really uh, Robin Hood. If anything, we're a Sheriff of Nottingham. And um, when Richard the, the Lionheart came back from... Uh, the Crusades to claim his throne. Um, the way he did this was um, he basically came up to Nottingham and put it in siege because we was the last stronghold of rebellion uh, against him. Um, so, so Nottingham played a, a big part in, uh, in uh, uh, you know, those times in royal affairs. Um, and I always find this, this romancing of Richard the Lionheart quite weird. Um, he had no kids. Hmm. And all the royal family since has come from John, you know, uh, obviously, you know, it uh, kept moving around and, uh, you know, we had uh, the, the Dutch and then the German sort of, uh, yeah. bloodlines. but it basically came from, from John, not, not from Richard. And yet we have this romantic idea of him. Uh, so he went over in the Crusades, um, didn't win, uh, uh, got to Jerusalem, didn't even go in Jerusalem. Uh, um, and uh, he, he basically came back. So um, I just find it a, a bit strange. So I've written a, a poem uh, called uh, 1189, the first pub crawl, um, because I used to go around all the pubs in Nottingham uh, when, when I was there, when I was 18. Um, so this mentions a few of the pubs. Rather than, rather than ride to the third crusade, in Nottingham, Richard should have stayed. 
and had himself a swift lemonade. Only one trip to Jerusalem should he have been considering, then the salutation and then the Benin, Belin, then the salutation and then the Belin. Top that with a curry, home in a taxi, that's what I call a win-win. No point in getting salad in, it'll only go off. So I, 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 I love the, the fact that yeah. we, uh, we try and romanticize this man who um, was basically not interested in England at all. As I say, mm. he spent uh, uh, six months, less than six months uh, um, in England. Um, so I, I don't quite know what it is we're arcing back to. It's, it's like it's not as if it's stopped now. I mean, Prince Philip, uh, you know, whatever your opinions are, you know, the idea you can reinvent uh, a person on the media uh, is quite interesting. And what I find is there's a, there's a you know, debate around the royal family. You have a debate on which part of the royal family you like or not. Rather than I can't remember the last time a Republican was on TV going, well, actually, well, let me get rid yes, of it, you know, which is quite I, interesting. I, I, I've got to say, I'm a Republican, uh, um, and I, I'd never be poet laureate. Not that they'd ask me, but uh, yeah. I'd never be. But I, I have no problem with them as individuals. I, I, I you know, I, I think they're they're fine as individuals. And uh, you know, uh, Mountbatten uh, um, uh, obviously changed his name because he's Greek. Uh, yeah. And uh, mm -hmm. you know, the Windsors uh, aren't the Windsors. You know, it, it's um, uh, their second. Their name was uh, it was Goth. Uh, um, uh, with an E on the end, uh, which they changed during the Second World War because we were being bombed by a, a German plane called yeah. Goth. Uh, um, and, you know, I quite like the fact that we've got an immigrant family doing so well in, yeah. in, in, in Britain. Uh, and and I, I, I like the fact that they've, been, they've assimilated and done it. But let's not pretend it's something else. Yeah. Let's not pretend it's, it's a symbol of something it, it's not. It's you know it's a symbol of of, of uh, uh, you know tolerance and and uh, and that if if we know what we're talking about as opposed to you know uh, as I say this strange flag waving that, um, uh, that that seems to arc back to an, an idea that we that never was. And yeah, that then then it, yeah, it's uh, I mean if they're you know it's that ideology really isn't it? And sometimes you. You think it's a conspiracy, and I think, and in a world of conspiracies, there's no conspiracy of seeing people in massive wealth and then people in poverty. You know that that's just reality, and uh, um, and I think recently over the football billionaires, people yeah. have just seen that people always go, you know, so, you know it's gross, gross, uh, grotesque amounts of money in the world, and we 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 still can't, um, you know, look at the real problem and trying to feed everybody. Um, and that's that's and I don't want to move on to the vaccine because people think I'm the vaccine minister. I look a bit like oh, you do. Look and, yeah, yeah, the yeah. Deans and bar, yeah. I mean, that is, you know, I might be able to get into the Tory cabinet. It's interesting that most of the Tory cabinet are now Indian and uh, uh, and black, and the white white cabinet, uh, the uh, Labour Party, are predominantly white. What a weird world that, that is. is. That uh, is that is that is a bit that is a bit strange. Now, now, so. Um, uh, how have you got on during lockdown? Because obviously it must alter uh, what you're doing. Have, have you have you managed to keep sane? Yeah, I think I've never I'm never going to be sane, which which is a good advantage because you just go well, you know, keep on doing the things that uh, keep you interested. What's been brilliant is been making links with people in different other in different countries and the Zoom poetry events. We've been link I've been linking with people in Swansea. Uh, right, uh, Swansea Life Poets, Poets in Manchester, and uh, coming up on the 25th of May, um, Poets Against Racism are in the USA. We're, we've linked in with um, watershed writers in Pennsylvania, and they're a group of writers who wanted to show their diversity and to recognise a year since uh, Lloyd, uh, George uh, Floyd was murdered on the 25th of May. Uh, they wanted to have a poetry event. So um, joint, we're part of a, a co joint event uh, on the 25th. How, how do people find that, man? You don't, well, I, I, we're going to, we're going to, we're just finalizing the details. So it's going to be on, uh, it's going to be on air meet, which is a, uh, what they, what they use, what we're going to yeah. uh, perform on. And then it's going to be live on YouTube and recorded on YouTube and on their website. So once we have the fine details done, we'll be able to send people the links. Now, now you're on uh, you're on Twitter, aren't you? Uh, and yeah, and Facebook. I'm so people can log into you on Twitter and Facebook, and you'll give them the details. Yeah, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. So I'm trying to do that. So I think in in 
I think we're forced to continue to try to communicate with each other. So it's I'm not I am missing the just the collective feeling of being in a in a group. But, you know, I'm not uh, not rushing to get there. So, yeah. Oh, good. Now, I'm going to see if anybody's got any questions. Let's have a little look here. Uh, uh, so if anybody's got a question, if you uh, if you type it into the uh, chat or you type it into the Q&A, so I'm going to press on my Q&A. Can Manjit tell us about the creation of Poets Against Racism, its growth and with the public response? Well, you've told us a little bit. Yeah. Is there anything more you'd like to tell us? Just that it's a simple idea. It's not as if we hold, we're a bit like the bat signal. We put up the fist <laughs> and the pencil and yeah. people gather around and put on an event. So there's no sort of secret recipe. If you're against racism, you're a poet, you live in a town, get a group of you together, hire a pub. Um, and like in, in Philadelphia on the 25th, I've, you know, send them the picture of uh, the Poets Against Racism. They put it on their leaflet. You do a joint event. So uh, the, 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 formula is quite simple get get people to come together as artists put on a, an event uh, share some time together show your diversity of your city by putting poets again so poets against racism that's the that's the theory so the blueprints there for people to just take and and do it great and uh, um uh, so just poets against racism have its own sort of uh, twitter and and facebook and whatever. yeah po poets against racism the facebook page is the best place to to follow us great. Um, all right well uh, so, uh, so uh, if, if people go there um yeah. uh, i i have uh, uh, facebook and twitter and instagram and all that sort of business so i'll i'll re re uh, uh, tweet it or whatever they call it or yeah. re post it uh, um on that so uh, another question somebody's asked um they love poetry, but are asking, um, how the hell do you, uh, do you make a living as a poet? Well, you, well, you don't. What you, well, <laughs> I do, what, you, you don't, what you do is look for kindness of human beings to turn up and sort of um, come to gigs. But I think what's, what, what you can do is, um, certainly the, the, the workshops I'm doing for schools, and I've done a poem for the, for the castle, so you're safe in Brighton, uh, yeah. away from the castle then and for other organizations uh, you can use poetry to spark discussion about difficult issues and get people to talk and open up yeah. so if organizations and schools want to get children to not be scared of poets and poetry um, then they can make it accessible so you can you can find using poetry can um, link you into activities and workshops where other where teachers struggle to communicate with some pupils or organizations find it difficult to attract people artists and putting a poet in your organization i think will attract people so you can get people who will pay you to perform but uh, um, you know as an individual you know there were there was there's a great poets who are making a living and touring around the world yourself, Henry, and everybody else. But well, well yes, I, 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 think... I, I, I had to do a I had to do a proper job for, uh, as my dad would call it, for yeah. thirty years uh, to so to earn enough money so I could live like Byron. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, so uh, although I don't I don't sleep with my sister. Yeah. Uh, um, so I, uh, you know I I'm 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 know that before then I, I uh, when I was in my uh, in my early twenties. I must have done about a thousand gigs. Seriously, I know that sounds a lot, but over a, a course of uh, uh, 10, 15 years, because um, I'd gig anywhere uh, yeah. for any amount of money uh, and just work my way up and, and, and try to, you know, and uh, do factories, hospitals, uh, you know, uh, pop concerts, uh, you know, anything. And it's very difficult to earn a living uh, uh, as a poet. Um, I know a lot of uh, poets do, as you say, do work in schools. Um, they do uh, commissions uh, yeah. and all sorts of things, but it's essentially. I don't think. It, I don't think it's a business decision. I think uh, it's it's a calling in a strange sort of way to be a, to be a poet. You 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 either are a poet or you're not a poet. And I think that's right. And a lot of the poet po po recent poems, I'll have people ring me from the local campaigns and say, "Can you do a poem? We've got a swimming bath closing down, or we've got this campaign we've got and made a march." And I'll do a you know, it's free poem, and I'll come and write a poem. In a way, that's quite you do it because you're 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 asked by people to be part of something. And I think poetry, you know, it, you can make a living. I am making work, you know, money through workshops. But the reason to do it is, you, you, like you say, you are driven and to get a, either a message yeah. across 
to tell people about yourself but so the and sometimes poems just take you and you you've got no choice but to just get them performed yeah you uh, yeah it's it's not a it's not a business decision that that's that's for sure but uh, um do you know uh, there, there's uh, there's an, an old line in um the outer limits i remember i, I get all my philosophy from uh, uh, yeah. trash tv uh, which says uh, does the man demean the job or the job demean the man and i've always uh, recognized that you can do anything for a living yeah if you put your art into it uh, and it doesn't matter what you do uh, um you know so long as you believe in it and uh, you know uh, and you so you can be a poet and anything else uh, is is the thing I, I i think now i was going to see if we've got any other questions what's this say um cool that's a bit uh, long can't, can't read that one um there we go there we are it's a shorter one let's have a look ever tempted to write song lyrics uh Manjid? Um. I don't think, I think, yeah, there are song lyrics in my poems that just appear because I think you've subconsciously absorbed lines. I mean, I've got a poem called uh, Manic Street Preacher, which is about people chasing me in Nottingham uh, with the Bible and telling me, and obviously the Manic Street Preachers, you know, st sticks in your head. I think there are lines of songs that stick in your head. I think yeah. rhyming poems um, really helps. Um, you could go on to look at it uh, as a song. As a poem, I got which is which is could be seen as a rap, but I don't I don't see a distinction. I think also it's it's really good poetry is enough. Sometimes people put a backtrack behind a poem and then jazz it up a bit and say let's liven that poem up, poem up. And I say no, actually the words of the poem are there to be heard. Um, sometimes just cleanly, uh, yeah. and sometimes poetry has to be sort of. Um, used to to get it more accessible through songs um i think is a mistake i think poems inspire songwriters um well, the other, the I, I, I i do i mean i love uh, um uh, lyrics and I, I love listening to music and even the simplest ones i mean uh, uh, me and my boy uh, we often when we fold in clothes uh, we often sing uh, um you know bob marley uh, don't worry about a thing it's a very yeah, simple yeah. lyric but it makes you feel happy uh, and uh, there yeah. are some lyrics. Uh, um, Paul Simon um, uh, has got some fantastic lyrics that could almost stand on the page as, as poetry, but they do add something to it when yeah. you, you get the, the melody. Um, I, can't, I can't write personally and I can't sing. I've got no uh, pitch. I, I did once play Kazoo uh, on television to 3.4 million people, uh, um, but that was, that, that was when I peaked, uh, man. Yeah. That was... Uh, but um, I think there's you can get something more over in poetry, something a little bit more sophisticated than the constraints of, uh, of of lyrics. I think that's what it is. Yeah, and it's also accessible to uh, you know a number of and then try it, and that's the thing. Try write, writing poetry, and and if you like the stuff you're doing, um, you like it, and that gives you a lot of confidence. And I'm I'm you know that that's important encourage people to and i think it's also important now to start writing to reflect what you're going through you'll be surprised how much it helps just to write and get rid of your uh, frustrations about the government or the world and put it in a poem uh, it certainly helps me to to die uh, to document uh, what's happening um but yeah i defend i defend yeah. poetry alongside music Right, we're coming up to uh, um, time to go. Uh, so I'm going to ask you to, to read a last poem. Okay, yeah, I'm going to read, uh, as you talked about nationalism, I'm going to read uh, uh, my flag. And this poem really is, if there's a, I think also there's, um, for poetry, it's, it's good to give a, leave people without any uh, uh, confusion about who you are. So this poem, my flag is, is to ask people to be wary about people who use nationalism and the flag to wrap up and cover up um, uh, cover up the, 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 the attacks that are being taken place. So this is uh, my flag, it represents what I believe. So it's called my flag. My flag has no edge or borders. It doesn't make me stand up salute, it doesn't give me orders. My flag is the color of a bloodstain, 
some lost in battle, some still in vain. My flag is not a football slogan or a reason to learn to hate. My flag is the difference in humanity, something to celebrate. My flag is for my children and for your children too. My flag is for the many, not for the privileged few. My flag is not owned by kings or queens or by the nation state. My flag says break these mental chains. My flag says liberate. My flag has no spread eagle, yellow star or rising sun. My flag is an open heart. There's room for everyone. My flag is not on the side of a bank or on a dollar bill. My flag has never declared war. My flag doesn't know how to kill. My flag is not made of gold or diamonds, nor does it smell of oil. My flag waves in the streets below in the hands of struggle and toil. My flag is not the history of rulers past. It's the history we've yet to write. My flag is not here to add to the darkness. My flag is here to bring you the light. My flag is my mother's tongue, although not here to see. My flag is not here to keep you out. My flag is here to set you free. Oh, that's gorgeous. Thank you, man. Thank you. That's, that's brilliant. So um, I, I should do a poem in a second, but I just yeah. want to uh, do a few thanks. So thank, thank you uh, um, for being my guest this week You're and, uh, and uh, being brilliant. Um, next week, I've got uh, at this same time, uh, Wednesday at noon, uh, Panya uh, Banjoko. Uh, you know brilliant. Panya, don't you? Yeah, yeah, Panya. They know not to give a brilliant writer, brilliant, uh, brilliant uh, history um, uh, and historian and she's uh, been doing fantastic stuff in Nottingham, an inspiration. So uh, do do join us for that, uh, that'll be great. I say we've got 10 of these, so uh, um, I should keep us going through till the 7th of July. Now, um, uh, I'd like to thank again uh, the Inspire um, uh, and uh, Metronome, uh, Notts County Council, the Nottinghamshire Libraries, and everyone, uh, Confetti, and everybody, and the tech, the tech people, thank you very much. Everybody for uh, getting the, uh, uh, the Zoom sorted for you today. Uh, I'm going to finish off with this poem. So I was telling you, Manjit, about um, me listening to Radio 4 and them saying uh, that uh, we'd lost the, 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 the battle to persuade young yeah. people. And, and, and I, I've gone home and I was angry. I, and I wanted to think to myself, so what do I want them, what do I want them to say? Yeah. And, and this is the, this is my poem uh, uh, for that. So uh, thanks everybody. And I uh, hope you enjoyed today. Uh, I'll leave you with this. This is called, uh, this is not an house of war. Everything I want for my children, I want for your children. Everything I wish for me, I wish for you. This is not an house of fear. This is an house of life. How can I not see myself in you? If you look, how can you not see yourself in me? You are respected as much as I am. You are of worth in equal measure. You are family. You are us. This is not an house of intolerance. This is an house of acceptance. We are the house, you and I. This is where you belong. This is where we belong. This is your home. This is our home.